Hey everybody, welcome back. I am the Gerbil, and in today's video, it's going to be a bit of a follow up to my recent uh, video about Raven's Claw and its early game success, uh, mid game, and in this one, this one's going to be focusing on late game. How does Raven's Claw really, honestly stack up? And the answer is really, really good. Even in uh, the Kyber One Two, I'm in Kyber Two Upper Echelon of Kyber Two. It it does uh, fantastic things. Um, as I've said previously, most people have ignored the Raven's Claw because when it came out, it didn't have a purpose. But with Home 1 losing the Falcon, most people who got Profundity just kind of never looked back. But because I made my alt account and I've been building up the Raven's Claw and Home 1 fleet from scratch, I've really, really had a lot of opportunity to test this. And my, my conclusion is that the Raven's Claw is probably one of the absolute most effective early game ships and even late game, it is totally reinvigorating my home one fleet now that I'm understanding more of how to use it well. So Radis is, I think, a very, very good example of what it can do because Radis is a fleet that many Kyber players put on defense because of its consistency at stripping away banners from the enemy fleets. Uh, it's not a hard fleet to beat Radis, but it's a hard one to walk away with 72 banners or more. However, you're going to see here in this, this particular matchup, uh, we're going to walk out of this match with 74 fleet uh, banners. And yeah, you'll see I do have the Falcon in reserve, but not on any of the following videos. So there we are, 74 banners. All right, so let's look at this, um, uh, another matchup, but uh, without the Falcon. So my opponent um, has got Ray right there. They've got Resistance Fighter instead of Poe. I think Poe is better, but can't pick and choose your battles sometimes. So here we go. All of these matches from this point forth are going to include Biston Biggs and the Raven's Claw. Uh, the first reinforcement is going to be um, generally Cassian, but it may depend a, a little bit on board state. So you want to open up with Biggs, not Biggs, Biston will be your fastest, put target lock on Ray, try to get a double tap out of either the, the Raven's Claw, who will call an assist, or if Biggs goes next, use a special so that he attacks calling an assist also. After that, utilize your foresight on your ships that through the Raven's Claw allow you to bypass the, the tanks, just like that, and kill off the attackers. See, every time you get a target lock, then the a random fleet ally is going to gain foresight. And while they have foresight, they can ignore taunt. So utilizing that and all the target lock you're gonna get, uh, you can just basically ignore, 100% ignore. Um, here's a good one also with the claw. We're going to strip away all turn meter while simultaneously killing uh, Rose. That was really nice. Um, a lot of people forget that the Raven Claw's AoE removes 100% turn meter from the target. So if somebody is taunting and you got foresight, then just ignore that, strip away the turn meter, and also do a little AoE. Um, another thing is that if the Raven's Claw starts the turn, I think with Foresight, it randomly target locks another enemy, which randomly applies Foresight again. Why is the Falcon so, so good uh, as a first reinforcement? Well, when it enters the battlefield, it applies Foresight on your entire team. And that Foresight on your entire team is what allows you to bypass the taunt. Um, in addition, it calls everybody to assist, uh, which gives everyone protection up from home one and it uh, then reduces the cooldowns on the Falcon or the, the capital ship. So it's, it's an amazing first reinforcement. I highly recommend actually running the Falcon as your first reinforcement uh, if you don't have profundity. Um, even if you have profundity, there are case situations where you don't need the Falcon, but it's safer to keep it there. All right, so here we are against Finalizer. We'll look at two matches. You basically want to go straight at Kylo Ren. Um, the Shadow, Kylo Ren Unmasked, uh, the, the Thai, whatever that was, I don't remember the name of it. Um, Kylo Ren, if, if, if Kylo Ren Unmasked dies, then the Finalizer fleet just doesn't have anything going for it. Um, so you can see how quickly we have just completely dominated this, this matchup. Um, 
the finalizer is going to strip away more banners. Uh, it does have um, a lot more speed. It's pretty much going to go first. So just be aware of that one. But nonetheless, you know, I'm actually looking around here going, how can I heal? Who can I get more banners back from? I'm trying to delay this, actually. Um, and there we go. So match is over. So, okay, that was pretty easy. 70 banners. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, let's look at this again. Another matchup. So they're going to hunt somebody, I think is what that is. I don't remember hunted or something. They're going after the claw, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Okay, we're going to put target lock out there. We're going to do an AoE. So we're going to get two assists. Unfortunately, Raven's Claw was not one of them, but we got protection up on Biston. That's good. All right, now here we go. We're going to bypass the taunt. And in this case, I went straight for Kylo Ren. Um, why did I not go after Kylo Ren Unmask? He was in stealth, I think. So I can't bypass, so we're going to AoE. Took away all the turn meter from Echelon. They're going to call in a TIE Fighter. Okay, nice. We're going to call in Cassian, which is going to cleanse the enemy fleet of all buffs, at which point we kill uh, either one of the... Oh, no, look at that. He's still taunting, and I don't have foresight. Bummer. But that's okay. Cassian plus Biston equals dead tank. No problem there. Okay, so we're going to tap. We got the target lock with Biston's basic. His basic will, will target lock. Double tap there from the Raven's Claw. If the enemy has target lock, then the Raven's Claw will attack twice and call uh, an ally if it also had foresight at the start of the turn, which it usually will. I mean, it, it will usually have foresight. Um, you can pretty much just take that one to the bank and rely on it. So you can see this one was a little bit grindier, but um, it was not really a close match. It is pretty solid. Biston's still at full health and protection there. I think Cassian was too. And of course, we still had reinforcements. And it was a territory war battle, so it doesn't matter. All right, on to Malevolence. Um, Spy is generally my target that I will go after first if he's on the board. You can see our opening shot nearly killed him. And then Home One's... <laughs> Home Ones AoE finished it off and took out the uh, the Vulture. I think that's the Vulture Droid. Yeah, that's the Vulture Droid. Um, after that, we just have to get rid of the Hyena Bomber before they call in a reinforcement. Cassian is going to cleanse the board. We're going to call Biston to attack, and that's, that's it. Game over. So target lock, attack, double tap, AoE, Cassian, win. Um, and I'm having network problems there, so pardon that. I tried to accelerate that rather than waiting 30 you know, seconds. All right, once again, here we go. Sunfac or Soldier. There's no spy, so I'm going to target lock Soldier because he's going to do more damage. Unfortunately, Biggs can't do anything, so we're going to target lock again. Now we can bypass double tap. Got the assist from Biston, which is great. And we're going to just kill Soldier. Uh, next, we're going to switch over. Normally, I'll switch over to Sunfac because he's just going to keep taunting no matter what. Um, so we'll just go for a basic, try to get target lock, fail, basic. We're going to call in um, uh, Cassie in here in a second, strip off all those buffs, remove a little turn meter there. I, don't, I didn't see if that worked. Um, oh, look at that. I decided to heal up, keep Biggs alive. I guess I, I guess when I was playing this in real time, I didn't feel like there was any threat happening. Okay, so we're going to put another target lock out, which gives us another foresight. There's the double tap and the kill, just like Han's Millennium Falcon. Oh, look at that. Another double tap. Almost got Spy out of there. Now we're going to call in Cassian cleansed off the board, which will take uh, Spy out of stealth so we can kill, kill Spy. Oh, look at that. He dodged. Oh, don't you love that RNG? That's okay. We're going to target lock. Now we kill him. Now all we got to do is worry about the droids. No problemo. No problemo. Get a little AoE here on the bomber. That's going to take care of the vulture up top. Got rid of it. Uh, I would love to heal Biston, but we're going to just continue to cleanse off all those. Uh, never mind. We're not going to cleanse. We're just going to win. Um, yeah. There you go. 70 banners again. Not bad. Not bad. So these are consistently 70, 72, 74 banners without the Falcon and starting with Raven's Claw. All right. So here we are against Negotiator. This is way harder because of the unending loyalty. Now in this one, we have the double attacker, uh, Ahsoka, Bi Ahsoka, Anakin, and the Y-Wing, which is actually a preferred starting lineup for for this home one because you can usually kill ahsoka just like we did which means if you have to come in here and try to clean it up with a second fleet it's a little bit easier um, but it gets a little scary 
It definitely gets scary. I don't recommend Raven's Claw counter against Negotiator. Um, it kind of depends on their opening lineup. If they have the double tank, uh, I would say like Rex and Y-Wing. Um, even Fives and Y, it's a little more challenging. I, I do win overall. I mean, I absolutely have a winning record here, but it's, it's a low banner win, and it's also um, just a bit of a nail biter. Um, because that unending loyalty, like I said, it keeps them alive and, and it's a lot harder to keep, to, to be consistent. But here we go. So we did lose Biggs. And, all right, we almost had this and then they call in Plo for the cleanse, right? Keep tapping, double tapping. And unfortunately, in this example, the, the Raven's Claw is just not getting the bonus protection because he's not attacking out of turn. And Wedge, who I think is by far the worst pilot in the Rebel lineup, um, had a decent hit at 60,000, but not enough to kill. Um, so we're, we're doing okay, but again, like I said, super low banners. And I'm like, do I cleanse and heal, try to get back a banner, or do I go for the win? Everybody was dazed, so I couldn't get an assist. So we heal up someone. And look at that, we get another healing Jedi out. See, you can see how this is just a bit of a struggle. All right. Okay, so I can ultimate, which we're going to. We're going to look at one more negotiator battle after this. And in that last negotiator battle, I do not win. So you'll see what happens when things go horribly wrong. Negotiator is such a grindy match. Just the constant healing, healing, healing. All right, so two Jedi versus two U-Wings. I would go for the U-Wings. I think the U-Wings is such a better ship. Way cooler. All right, nice dodge. Yep, that should have been a kill shot on that, but we, he dodged. Oh my goodness, see, look at that. Look how the Plo is just saying, no, no, I'm not going down. Such longevity. Basic again. Come on. Put target lock out there. Double tap. Come on, get them both. Nope, got the consular. All right, 3v1. We can do it, gerbil. There we go. Good job. Good job. Got the win. All right, so here's what happens when things... And look at that, 63 banners. That is not worth repeating. All right, so here is what happens also when things do not go right. Okay, so we've got the double attackers and we got the Y ring. So we're going to open on Ahsoka, try to double tap and get an assist. And we did. We did not get the kill. Uh, in this situation, Biggs had attacked. If Biston had been the assist, we probably would have uh, killed her. So it's about a 50 50 chance and we did not get the good roll. Um, they've hit Biggs really, really hard. And right here, uh, it's a tough choice. I absolutely want to keep Biggs alive though, so I will pretty much always go for the heal. Also because he's dazed. You've got to keep daze off your rebels. They they need the protection recovery from home one by assisting out of turn. So if you don't get that, you're in trouble. All right, so it actually, we're, we're doing pretty good, but now we're in that situation with the Y and Rex and um, our clone sergeant um, who is just just as bad double tank and anakin is is a problem even though yes the claw allows you to bypass the problem is negotiator also puts out so much uh, days on your team so that you just don't get those attacks out of turn and the assist which means of course you're not getting that protection recovery so there we go we've just lost biggs and they've got the unending loyalty and it's just going to go downhill from there. So I'm gonna stop talking and let you watch. I hope you enjoy. If you learned anything, give me that like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.